ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's Emid here as always, back for another month of world records to review. In contrast to essentially all of 2019, November was the most quiet month for activity thus far in 2019, with six records set across four tracks. But not to worry, however, these were some very strong records set, and we're going to go through all of them all right now. Starting off this month, we have Sosis improving further on Moo Moo Meadows on November 2nd. He beat his previous world record of 115.514 by 31 milliseconds with a time of 115.483, marking the first sub 115.5 on Moo Moo Meadows. In the past, I have discussed the different areas of the track to look out for in regards to potential time save in these new records here. And I think this comparison here shows us all fairly well, most notably being the low jumps, the minor grass hits into the last turn, and the last turn itself. I'd like to focus on this last turn, at least in this video now. Some of these last turns really look amazing and look very optimized when looking at a ghost on its own, but lately doing these monthly videos, the variance is quite interesting when doing these multi-ghost comparisons. The normal road at the end here is a mixture of small hills, which of course have a slope going up for them. The focus here is trying to land on the sloped part when it starts to be going downwards when you're starting your soft drift. Taking advantage of the physics of different sloped terrains like this really exaggerates how quickly you can charge the main turbos and save more time. Although these may appear effortless in these records, Please do believe that this is one of the hardest parts of the track to optimize and be consistent on. And as an example, we see the biggest variance here being on lap 2 at the end in his new world record, where his last turn probably caused a high 25.0 lap 2, judging by how far behind he was into the drift and where he wound up crossing the finish line. Sosis pulled off a clean hop for this drift nicely but had to start his turn shallow instead of turning completely hard left as he would have hit the grass and lost his run. The current best known splits as of today's upload date total a time of 115.292. Overall epic stuff getting the first 115.4 here Sosis and good luck if you choose to improve further. Next up we had two improvements on GCN Mario Circuit by Luke improving his own world record. On November 7th, he took down the world record by 30 milliseconds with a time of 130.748. Just one day later, he had a much more sizable improvement by 136 milliseconds with a time of 130.612, narrowly missing a 130.5. There's quite a bit of interesting areas to discuss here in both records and about this track overall. Breaking down the 137.48, there are a few things to highlight here. First being Luke did not get a full chain wheelie on any lap after the tunnel section. Lap 1 being a half chain, lap 2 being a drop chain, and lap 3 as well being a drop chain. I have a tutorial video that was released last month on chain wheelies which you can reference to learn more about what goes into chain wheelies. But briefly, you have one frame to perfectly time a re-wheelie every three seconds to maintain the most momentum moving forward. Every other frame after this first frame loses incremental time as it is more time spent accelerating back to top wheelie speed. Second, Luke missed his wheelie out of his main turbo after this hairpin turn and makes up time with a faster mound tricking strat here and you can see how much this can save based on the comparison versus his 136.12. There is untapped potential with these different mound trick strats, but it goes without saying that this is very, very difficult. Above all, he gets only a single trick to close out the lap and still gets a low 30.3 lap one. Very, very impressive stuff here. Third, he gets a very bad shroom on lap three and along with a drop chain wheelie still manages a near mid 30.2 lap on lap 3 which is crazy. It does not seem like it is that much but when comparing versus an ideal shroom you can see how much time can be lost when you stick on the exit here 
And funnily enough, this is where Luke pulls ahead of his 748 and his last record this month in the 612. And speaking of sticking on the exit of the shroom here, this happens on lap 2 of the 612. I know a lot of numbers, but follow me here, I have all the numbers on the screen. He still manages a 3165, which would have been most definitely at least a mid 30.0 lap. Luke clutches a 30.041 on lap 3 in this round as well, which is the newest best known split for lap 3, while getting a half chain this lap and getting very slightly slowed down on the last turn before the double trick. This was good enough to be a 29.9 lap if he had the full chain wheelie, as the difference between the half chain and a full chain is roughly 40 to 50 milliseconds. It is not unreasonable at all for a 130.3 time to happen here in the future, with the current strategies being used, meaning there's no multiple tricks done on the mound all three laps. And I even remember calling out at least a 130.5 or a 130.4 myself many, many years ago when I held the world record here. As with anything, it is of course far easier said than done, especially on this track where there are plenty of frustrating things that can happen on this track that can absolutely either halt your progress and overall your motivation to continue trying. There are a multitude of things I could explain here that would take way, way too long. Looking down the road here, I can definitely see a 129 happening humanly if someone really grinds out optimizing the multiple trick strategy at the mounds on all three laps. For now, the limiting factor as discussed back in July's video of this year is the Piranha on lap 2 at the end as well as the one on lap 3, with the one on lap 3 being the most apparent currently looking at how close he was on the 13612. However, I'm certain this can be beaten on lap 3 without any strategy changes actually. And from what I can remember, if you have a perfect alignment, you can actually wheelie to the left of this Piranha Plant without getting hit. The margin for error there is very very slim of course, but I believe it can be possible. But at least in my eyes, ideally, I think what's going to happen is eventually Luke or someone else will beat the Prana Plant on lap 3. And I think if you surpass that benchmark, being a Prana lap 3, you have a full chain wheelie, the ending is good, and he has a fast double trick, I think that would almost guarantee like a 130.4 at least, or maybe a 130.3, just by judging how things are currently. The current best known splits as of today's upload date total a time of 132.28. And at least to denote that these best known splits are without the multiple trick mounds to my knowledge and I don't think there's ever been a best known split with the trick mounds in mind. I think a couple of years ago someone had close to a best known split with the mound tricks just pulling it off in general but at least to my knowledge the current best known splits are still without these multiple trick mounds. At least with that being said this track still has a long ways to go in comparison to human potential but please make no mistake that this 130.612 is an incredibly, incredibly strong time that I don't really see anyone else besides Luke himself improving currently. So props to you Luke and good luck if you choose to improve further. Next up, we had an improvement on a track that we don't really see too often in these videos. Connor sets his first world record, not in general, but his first world record on Waluigi Stadium this month beating the previous world record set by Ace in January of this year by a large margin of 140 milliseconds with a time of 148.614 on November 17th. Connor has been hard at work on this track over the past several months, chopping down at his time until setting his world record this month. Overall, this run was a very clean run and one of my favorite parts of this run being his lap 3 recovery up on the hill when entering the zippers. I don't know how he managed to keep this run going in general from what happened here, but it makes for a very epic replay for sure. Currently it might be apparent, but the current state of Waluigi Stadium is by far one of the most technical tracks in the game, with many areas having very high potential for failing your run 
or losing a huge amount of time. And with that in mind, it really comes at no surprise to me that Connor was able to pick up this track and master it over time with his diligence. He has already set many world records on Grumble Volcano No Glitch No Shortcut, which I think is an underrated track in terms of technique needed to maneuver that track quickly. And he still holds the world record on DK Summit, which is another very, very technique heavy track. I wanted to throw this in as well. One day before this current world record, he failed a 148.5 pace. Unfortunately, at the very end of lap 3 on the last turn, which you can see the comparison here versus his 148.614, missing the wheelie out of the turn and getting a bad landing before the finish line. During this time, Connor has also driven the best known split on lap 1 since picking up the track. Connor has said that he would be happy with a 148.5, which is more than reasonable seeing everything here. Unfortunately, it wasn't on that fail that I showed here just before, but it's definitely in the cars rim without a doubt. The current best known splits as of today's upload date give a time of 147.921, so definitely more time to be saved here. Congrats on finally getting the record here, Connor, and good luck on further improvements. Closing out this month, we had more Luigi Circuit improvements from Cole. On November 24th, Cole had a large improvement of 30 milliseconds with a time of 108.811. And two days later, on November 26th, Cole clutched out a larger improvement of 37 milliseconds with a time of 108.774, marking the first 108.7 on Luigi Circuit. I'm really at a loss for words here, so I'll at least start off with Cole's own stats he posted this month to his Twitter. His current personal best splits, which noteworthy, they are also the overall best known splits as well. They total a time of 108.655. His best pace run thus far, is a 23.019 and a 22.860. His best six lap, meaning completed back to back attempts, is a 108.954 and a 108.855. I think that is really just insane just seeing that there. And his total number of 108 times being 109. He's gone over 100 108 times. It's just crazy. And also funny to mention the amount of 108 times in general, as there has not been any other player at all to have set a 108 time on the Luigi circuit since Cole's first sub 109 on January 15th, 2014, until just this past week, funnily enough of the timing here, by American player Casey setting his first 108 time and since setting two other 108 times as well this past week. At this point, this is definitely the embodiment of being a track specialist. Cole's mastery is very hard to describe here. With that said, to add to my normal outlandish predictions, I most definitely see Cole being able to hit a 108.6 time here. Now whether he wants to grind for that, well that's definitely another story, of course. But I think what would be the hardest part to optimize to get that time would be the shrooms on all three laps. And Cole, if you want to comment in the comments below to either agree or not agree, that would be pretty cool. Now there are the chain wheelies to take into account, which are difficult in of itself, but they only require pressing the D-pad on the game game controller, which Cole uses when he plays. In much contrast to the shroom having much more variance, of course. And even these comparisons, you can see how coming out of the exit at full speed and specifically the angle at which you exit the turn can save a decent amount of time. Regardless, this is one of the best world records set in the game's history in my opinion as of today's upload. I've said it before, but your diligence, your perseverance, and patience on this track is very admirable throughout the years here. So congrats to you Cole and good luck on further improvements if you choose to improve further. And like that, we complete the review of all the world records in November 2019, fellas. This brings the world record tally for 2019 up to 137 this year, with one more month to go. I did want to bring clarity to the activity stats for previous years as this has now changed this past month 
compared to what I have been displaying in previous months in this series at the end of these videos. This month, two players were caught to have been cheating their times, Japanese player Nagisa and Spanish player Russo X. Information regarding evidence of both players cheated time trials are linked in the description. On the screen now, these are the most updated world record tallies by year. And still just such awesome progress from everyone this year as well. As last year for making these past two years, of Mary Kurt Re time trials as the most active in several years now. I really look forward to what the close of 2019 will bring and of course what 2020 will look like for Mary Kurt Re time trials. If you like watching this series and you want to see more content like this, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Also, if you like time trials in just in general sense, along with other content related to Mary Kurt Re, I do stream frequently each week over on Twitch if you want to catch some live action as well. With that said, I thank you all as always for your continued support. I really always appreciate it. And I'll see all of you guys, my fellas, in the next video where we will conclude the world record activity of 2019 with December 2019. Take care.